research and also speaking with other people in the community, we noticed that some identify as Afro-Latinx, some Garifuna um, <laughs> Afro-Indigenous or Afro-Indio, some say they're Spanish, some say, you know what, I'm just strictly Garifuna. So what do you feel about these chosen identities and how do you personally identify? Sure. Um, you know, I think it's tricky. Um, it, I, I laughed a little bit because I actually, this is the part that I write extensively on, right? Um, where the negotiations, the contradictions, the, the self-making articulations are really, really important, right? But I also think it's also about a particular kind of generation of mm -hmm. Garifuna folks, right? I think it's a particular kind of migratory, you know, because Garifuna folks have been living in the U.S. And, and in particular between New Orleans and New York since the 1950s, mm -hmm. right? So like, there are going to be a lot of generational differences. There's also a lot of geopolitical differences, right? So a Garifuna Belizean um, is going to have a really different relationship to English speaking, right? Um, mm -hmm. Opposed to a Garifuna from Guatemala and Honduras, right? who are going to be very Hispanophone focused, right? They're, they're going to be very Hispanic identified, right? Um, and, the, and this even, even this idea of rejecting Afro-Latinidad, right? Is a contemporary one, right? Uh, part of the Afro-Latinx movement from the, from the 90s until the mid 2000s, um, mid 2010s is that you see Garifuna folks claiming Afro-Latinidad like it's their butter and bread. Um, <laughs> but then you see more of a contemporary move to reject it. Um, because I think there's also these politics around like, we've always known we were black. We've always known we were black. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't need a social media movement to remind us of our blackness. Uh, we also knew that our last colonizers were the Spanish, hence why all of our last names are uh, Hispanicized, right? Um, right. We, were, we were literally one generation from being British, right? Like we were just, you know, it was just that one moment, right? In 1797. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's murky, it's complicated. I think there's a lot to do with also who Garifuna folks are growing up with, right? I think Garifuna folks in Brooklyn have a really different relationship to Afro Latinidad than Garifuna folks in the Bronx. Um, you know, I'm a third generation Brooklynite um, whose Garifuna Honduran parents came in the 80s, right? So I identify as I mean, I certainly identify as Garifuna, right? Um, but I grew up in a in a black affirming household, right? Where we also understood that that we were black people, right? That we were part of a larger African diaspora. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we also deeply knew that a lot of people would misread us and think, oh, he, you know, they're Dominican or they're Puerto Rican, or because of the Hispanicizedness of of Garifuna folks, his last names and all of these different, you know, even the even the food, right? Um, people would assume some type of, you know, Dominican Republic connection, because I think part of the provinciality of Afro-Latinidad in New York is that, yep, all Spanish-speaking Black people are either Dominican or Loisa from Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. So there's these kind yeah. of, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So there's yeah. these kinds of fixities that I'm interested in kind of disrupting in my own work. But, you know, I think the question of identity is really tough. I think Garifuna folks, you know, we deeply know that we are Black Indigenous people. Uh, we deeply know that we have our own culture, our own language, our own history um, that is separate, but also entangled with mestizos and other Black people and other Indigenous people. Um, I do think here that a lot of first and second generation Garifuna New Yorkers in particular struggle with the term Hispanic, uh, because that is the term that society in the U.S. dictates, right? It dictates, you know, a a, a, a Dilma Martinez um, who understands to be Garifuna, understands to be a Black Indigenous person in the world, um, is here in the States. And she's like, yep, I check off Hispanic because my last name is a Hispanic last name, right? right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's tricky. I think there's a lot of negotiations that Garifuna folks do. I think the multiplicity of their racial and ethnic subjectivities really show not only on the census document, but in their everyday lives. Yeah, I mean, that makes total sense. What did surprise me, though, with what you said was the difference, um, like, I, I get the, the the role that geography plays, but you find a difference between those in Brooklyn and the Bronx. I didn't know oh, that absolutely. just a few boroughs over. That's so interesting. Why, why yeah. do you think there's a difference in boroughs? Well, I mean, Brooklyn has a deeper history uh, with the Black diaspora. Um, yeah. sure. Brooklyn is is the Caribbean. It's the South. It's what's at, It's West Africa, right? Like, Brooklyn just has also historically longer 
um, Caribbean communities, right? So there's a particular kind of negotiation that Garifuna folks do with West Indians Mm -hmm. that is really, really different from like a negotiation that Garifuna folks do with Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, and other Latinx communities in the South Bronx, right? Or in just in the Bronx, mm-hmm. right? Oh, so I think there's okay. a different negotiation. Yeah. I mean, also mm-hmm. part of the negotiation that happens in Brooklyn too is that Garifuna folks in particular um, find themselves in predominantly African American and West Indian spaces, right? So there mm-hmm. isn't this kind of, you know, the Bronx is very Hispanicized, right? The Bronx yeah. is a <laughs> very, you know, I mean, also Brooklyn is this. South, right? Like so much of like so much of African American families and communities in Brooklyn are also deeply diasporic people mm-hmm. who hold on to the South, right? So there's a different relationship to diaspora in that sense. And Garifuna folks are in that in their in 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 that space, right? And they're negotiating their blackness, their indigeneity, and their Latinidad to a certain extent. Um in the company of, of other Black diaspora communities. Right, so that they have that connection to their more immediate community. Yes. So that makes, okay, that makes total sense. And I should know as a native Brooklynite myself. Yeah, because okay. part of it too, right? Like part of the way Garifuna folks politically imagine New York City for themselves is that the Bronx is always deemed the largest Garifuna community in the city, right? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I came across, yeah. Well, yes and no. I'm, I'm saying no because also part of the reason that the Bronx is has the largest Garifuna community in the city has everything to do with recent migration, right? It doesn't have mm-hmm. to do with the 1950s, right? That wave of Garifuna immigrants coming and settling in Brooklyn, right? Mind you, the majority of Garifuna folks who are coming in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and are staying in New York, they're staying where the work is, right? And their work is port work, right? They're doing port entry work, right? They're they're coming with the United Fruit Company. So they're going to be in Brooklyn, right? So the, actually the oldest Garifuna communities in the city are all throughout Brooklyn because all of those Garifuna folks work the docks. They were yeah. working the docks, right? There's there weren't docks in the Bronx to work, right? So a lot of folks come to Brooklyn as their first point of entry. And, and the Bronx becomes really important later on, like in the 90s. Mm. But there's something also about like the recent migration of your folks, right? Like the majority of shelters in the Bronx are their predominant inhabitants are Garifuna women and Garifuna minors. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, because when, you know, of course, doing research, I knew they came over for work and, and cargo and all of that. Um, but I didn't even think about where the docks actually were, because in re- in your research, you see New York. They don't really specify a borough. So now that you're pointing mm-hmm. it out, that makes complete sense that they would come to Brooklyn first. Mm-hmm. You know, we have the piers, we have the docks there, and then, you know, move on to the Bronx in, in the following decades. I'm already learning so much. <laughs> <laughs> you you read things online, but then when you get the context from someone in the know, it just it changes perspective entirely. 